Thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate Thank it. you guys. Thank you. Uh, we thank appreciate, you. It. appreciate it. Thank you guys. They're actually taping what we're saying when we leave. And that's what, <laughs> 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 what you're yeah, that's what it's really about. They're like, man, them guys are <laughs> talkers. This is Good Looking Out. Today on Good Looking Out, Karen's guests need no introduction. First, we have singer, reality star, and entrepreneur Ray J. Ray co-founded two global consumer electronic companies, Raytronics and Raycon Global Inc. And he currently oversees the marketing strategy of the Raycon brand. Next, we have Everett Taylor, one of the youngest experts on launching successful startups. Everett went from being homeless and a college dropout to building four multi-million dollar companies before the age of 29. And he's currently founder and CEO of social media software company, Pop Social. And finally, we have Baron Davis. You know Baron is a first round draft pick and a two-time NBA All-Star. But since his time in the league, Baron has become a successful entrepreneur, investor, and filmmaker under his rapidly growing company, Baron Davis Enterprises. Now, let's take a look at today's pitch. My name is Vincent Mays. I'm uh, 34 years old. I'm from Sacramento, California, and my business is Collide Incorporated. My name is Chris Gamber, 33 years old. I'm the president of uh, Collide Incorporated. Collide is an interactive social media app that essentially takes the comment section out of your Facebooks and Twitters and then makes it where you can interact with one another via video chat. It is the evolution of Twitter. Some obstacles that we're gonna face are competing against social media giants like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat. It's definitely not a cheap game to get into. It's a big gamble, but scared money don't make no money. The advice I'm hoping to get from today's panelists is just honest feedback on how they feel about the idea at first. We're uh, all for taking constructive criticism on not just the app, but just business, period. I'm worried about just nerves, uh, you know, being able to present in front of people that, you know, probably going to be someone that we idolize and look up to and strive to be like. I'm just hoping that I'm able to let them see what it is we're trying to do and they understand it. We're going to revolutionize how we interact on social media. If I could say anything to the panel ahead of time, I would tell them to break out the checkbooks. Hi guys. How you guys doing? Hi. How you guys doing? How you doing? Good. Good. My name is Vince. I am the CEO and creator of Collide Inc. My name is Chris Cameron. I'm the president of Collide Inc. Okay. Today we want to talk to you guys about the uh, problems with our current social media platforms and what we think is the solution and the evolution of social media and how we interact on it. Collide. To the next one. So one of the current uh, problems with our current social media outlets are a dead end. So when you guys want to uh, talk to somebody about something serious, you don't want to text it to them, right? Mm -hmm. You want to actually have face-to-face -face interaction with them, see their mannerisms so you can try to understand what they're really saying. The second problem is the state of our country right now, we are a country divided. We need to start having more human interaction. And our third one is, like I've been saying, the basic human need for meaningful interaction. So we're not being fulfilled with our current social media platforms as far as having human interaction now these days. We believe that the solution to this is Next one. Collide. So we created Collide. It's a uh, interactive social media debate platform. So it allows you to uh, argue. I, it used to be called Let's Argue, but we switched it to Collide. So uh, it lets you debate mm -hmm. on six different categories. So what's called Let's Argue? It used to be called Let's Argue. Yeah. I'll Why y'all change it? It kind of gives a negative connotation when you say let's argue, argue right? yeah. and we want people to come to the app and actually have actual meaningful debates so, so they collide yeah, yeah so we can so argue debates collide. collide exactly yeah. so yeah. instead okay. of calling them debates they're called collisions the first thing you would do is browse one of the categories so i'm a sports fan right we got sport people in the house i would post hey i think the raiders are going to go to the super bowl right people are going to be able to like it well we call it agree they're going to be able to comment on it and it'll show your views just like any other social network but the cool thing is we created a collide feature. So when I disagree with whatever somebody is saying, I press the collide feature and my facial camera pops up. So now I get to tell you a rebuttal back to what you're saying, right? Okay. You'll get a notification saying, hey, Vince wants to argue or Vince wants to debate with you about whatever, right? So 
once you listen to that debate or that rebuttal, you can either accept it or deny it. So once you accept it, you're locked into a two round debate with that person. And your followers and my followers get to watch, comment each round, and then at the end, they get to vote on who they think won. After a 24 hour period of voting, you automatically in your profile get a win or loss. When I first created it, I was thinking of taking all the comment sections from Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and bringing them all into one place. Because mm -hmm. if you're in Instagram in the comments arguing with somebody with an egg in their profile, you kind of look stupid, yeah. right? So but now- But people argue with the do, egg in the profile. They, they do, and they can argue with the egg in the profile in the comments here, but uh, we want to bring more accountability to the people that are on social media. Yeah, when they do a video, it automatically goes live or it has to go through a screening process before no, it goes live? we're not going to be able to police the comments. We're gonna be able to police No, I that. mean, as far as policing the video, once I put my 15 second video up of whatever it is, does it go through some sort of filter or something where it gets approved by you? No, now no. That, that's the thing. If it comes up and someone does something like that, it will be banned immediately, obviously. Yeah. But no, we did, it does not get filtered prior to. What if somebody on there and then the girl just flashing everybody. Same, yeah, same thing on Facebook or anything else right now. It happens that way and people, and it gets like, we actually, there's actually companies you hire to monitor that stuff for you. I think you guys have to stand firm. Um, like right now, Jack Dorsey from Twitter, he's under fire because you know he's allowing people who put out hate speech. Yeah, you can do whatever. Uh, and you it's, can do whatever, yeah, yeah. and yeah. despite it's being a clear violation of Twitter terms, right? right. Say if Ray J is on Instagram and he promoting the scooty bike, right? And somebody's just like, you know what? I'm at you today, and Ray J feel like the smoke. How do you get? Ray J and also this person to come off of Instagram or Facebook to go on Collide and now have this one-on-one -on -one debate without that being Right. So how do we, are you asking how do we get people off how does of it what work? Like, what makes me care enough to go download this app and go have a video face-to-face -face conversation with whoever debate about Tupac? I don't know if I really care that much. You have to create a behavior cycle within people to think of Collide. Right. And that is gonna be the most difficult thing right. to do. I'm thinking in terms of like generating revenue, you have to start thinking a little bit bigger where it's like, we're partnering with ESPN and they're running contests for people that can debate with a Stephen A. Smith, right. you know, after first take. So guys, thank you so much. We're gonna have you step out for a second. We'll bring you back in. Awesome. Yes, ma'am. Thank, thank you guys. Thank you. So what did you think of Collide? I worked with Microsoft a few years ago to create this very app and mm -hmm. it failed. Now we're so oversaturated with social media apps, mm -hmm. right? What is gonna make people want to close down Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter mm -hmm. to use this app for that particular use case? Walking into the room was crazy. Seeing Baron Davis, Ray J was hilarious. I really enjoyed the feedback from Everett Taylor. I love going to the comments when I'm not, it ain't my picture, and I'm just, I'm like, oh God, let me see what they, gonna... I'm entertained by the comments mm -hmm. sometimes, which is probably bad. It's two things with this. I do like it that it's on the college campus. It can be turned into some sort of debate platform, but at the same time, you know, Charlemagne taught us like, we don't negotiate with trolls. Who is the audience? Who's yeah, the targeted right. audience? And how does it work, really? Yeah. How do we just go on? Right. Like, how, like, just, how do you get on and just go to it? At first, I was a little nervous, but as, uh, like, Ray J was giving feedback and going back and forth, that made me more comfortable as we, uh, as we went along and then Chris hopped in. I wish they would have gave us, you know, we they would have brought in that demo for ready. us and just showed it to us or something. Yeah, they could have showed ready. us a demo though. We do have an old prototype when it was called Let's Argue, but we didn't want to confuse them with giving them a prototype that looks totally different than what we're showing in our presentation. You could create a super dope product, you can have all the money in the world, right. and it's still, if people don't find it cool, they're not gonna do it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You could have walked through that deck in 45 seconds, a minute, and we could have had all our, con yeah, you know, yeah, had our conversation. And stuff. So let's bring them back in yeah. and uh, give them our feedback. Cool. Hey, it's you guys again. Hey, what's up? <laughs> well, thank you so much for the presentation. You guys want to give feedback? My feedback would be that you, you're you overconfident, right? And then you underperformed in the presentation, right? So, you know, I would cut out a lot of the fat and just talk about the app, what it serves, how it works, and then give one or two examples. Appreciate it. Right. 
I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I think I think it has a lot of potential. I think you gotta dig in, utilize the day to day people, mm -hmm. but to really put it on the map, try to get two big voices to collide. Right. And I'm done. <laughs> I got <laughs> shit to do. Everett. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I would say uh, come into this with like a humble mind and heart. A lot of investors actually are swaying away from social media because it's such a difficult thing to crack. And mm -hmm. I hear you guys talk about, hey, we already got this one partnership. We have this mo all this money, but you can have all these things and it doesn't necessarily equal success. I really wish you guys would have came in with some sort of demo, just something that we can see, even if it's just early on or something. I know you talked about, you know, you guys have large marketing dollars or whatever the case that's going into this, but I didn't really see it in the presentation. I want to figure out who the audience is for this. Because for me, it's not me. And it kind of seems like you guys are streamlining it for everyone. But we want to offer you some cash towards your app development. And thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Um, we appreciate, thank you. It. appreciate it. Thank, thank you, guys. Thanks, thanks a lot. Thank you. We appreciate it. Yeah, man. Yeah. Thanks for the feedback. I see y'all in the comments. We can collide. Overall, I felt the presentation, I didn't want to overload them with uh, like numbers and stuff like that. I tried to get to the problem that we were trying to fix and then the solution being our app. I think when Karen um, mentioned the marketing dollars thing and, I, and that's what, what we meant by that was that's what we're shooting for, to have a big marketing budget. And in hindsight, I feel like we could have been a little more clear on the actual target. Our biggest mix up with Baron, I think, was just the clarity of our presentation. Everybody sees things different and in a different light, and, and that's our jobs as presenters to make sure that everybody gets the point. I thought Everett's feedback was, was the best feedback of all. He said that with all these other social media apps, the users kind of determine where the app's gonna go. So we will listen to our beta testing community. Big shout out to Complex, Karen, uh, Baron Davis, Ray J, Everett. It was a great experience for us. Hopefully at some point we can collab with some of them in the future. Like so, so now like they're the people that are like giving us advice on how we should do it. It's like, I wish it was uh, someone bigger. Who was the other guy? I don't know. He seemed like the smartest guy. Yeah. For sure. Ray J was like, okay, so. <laughs> Let's say I want to uh, collide, right? <laughs> you guys suck. I thought I explained how. You did. That's the whole point of the slide. Baron Davis is. I was like, D -d 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 are you confused? You should be like, did, did, did I stutter? <laughs> yeah, I told you, bro. It's not, not, we ne didn't necessarily need this thing, you know? Yeah. Whatever. What image comes to mind when you think of a typical startup founder? Chances are it's wrong. The National Bureau of Economic Research found that the average age of a startup founder is 42 years old. And for the highest growth startups, that figure rises to 45. So, if young entrepreneurs want to be taken seriously, they clearly have some extra work to do. Let's talk the simple facts with Baron Davis and Ray J to hear their advice on how to break through. If an entrepreneur is launching a tech business, what are the top three things he or she needs in place before they're ready to go to the market? Well, you gotta have a strong team. Mm -hmm. You gotta have a team. You have to have a deck. You mm -hmm. have to, you know, you have to have all your preparations in order okay. before you go out and try to pitch something to somebody, you know, trademarks, domain names, um, just everything secure. So when you start throwing your ideas out, Everything is locked in. If you're building something that's technical, you know, you're gonna need some engineers. Like, so okay. the right engineer, the right advisor, mm -hmm. right? Somebody who probably been in the space or is educated in the space. And then you need the right lawyers. So what makes a company so attractive to you that you decide to buy in and become an investor? Uh, for me, I would say first is uh, the CEO. Mm -hmm. You know, who's running the company, how well do they know the business, their space, what they're doing, where they're going. So it's, it's the personality who's the leader. Secondly, it's the company in itself, you know, how they're structured, who all are invested, how many people they employ, how much money that they're spending. I think just looking at, you know, look at the CEO, look at the company, and then third, what problem are they solving in the marketplace? So, you know, whether they're assisting something or they're actually disrupting the space, then I think all three of those things, if, if those things combine, then it makes the company attractive. We were in the hoverboard space a couple of years ago, mm. and while everyone was into that craze, 
you took it a step further and you went elsewhere and you went into scooters. Yeah. So talk about the creation of the Scooty bike and where you are now. Well, the hoverboard was kind of like a, a, a toy that mm -hmm. a lot of people were like getting hurt on. I seen the Mike Tyson footage. I mean, he, he took a, a, a hard fall on it. <laughs> he did. And um, that scared me. Um, with the scooters, it's a different thing because everybody loves to ride bicycles and everybody loves to cruise. So it was it was a much more of a safer product. And, and, and I just felt like electric transportation being that it's a green, the green initiative and where we are going just with the world in itself, it's gonna be a change. So I just wanted to be on it first. So let's turn this to cryptocurrency. Do you think it's a good investment or is it volatile? I think it was good at the time. I think mm -hmm. it had a big boom. Mm -hmm. And I think now you have to be extremely educated on that business and you know who you know and um, just with the relationships, I think have to be really strong to survive in crypto. In my opinion, you gotta have the right blockchain. Okay. You have to have the right, you know, just the right people around you that's gonna help you move whatever coin you're trying to, you know, sell. Well, should small businesses be accepting crypto as a form of payment? I mean, if, if I was a business, I would keep it simple and yeah. just do credit cards or if you're a cash business but again if you educated and you and you know about crypto and you have the right people around you that's going to guide you in the right space then it could be good for you you know it's just it's all about what you know and who you know as long as you can attach it to like a tangible asset then that's what makes the most sense for me for crypto now let's take a question from one of our complex viewers Hey everyone, my name is Bianca Lee Channer. I am a multidisciplinary designer based in Toronto, New York, and I co-founded Nontrast, which is a set design and product design development studio, and we designed the Hustlers Agenda. We would like to take the Hustlers Agenda into the digital space. Is it possible for an entertainment product to gain traction with the use of a influencer or major celeb behind it? An audience builds an audience, and if the product is great, you know, you think about all the great companies and all the great products, you know, that have been, um, that have turned into multi-million dollar, billion dollar companies. They didn't start with a celebrity. If you can get that product into an audience and move that product, then, you know, a celebrity or someone of influence will actually find it and do what and you need to do. do yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good to have the cosign mm -hmm. um, because with the cosign you have just, you have more power. I think mm -hmm. it, the company's worth more, I think, in you know, investors' eyes. But again, you have to have a great product. To go after a celebrity or a tastemaker in the beginning is dangerous, because are you gonna really get what you're paying for? Will the celebrity really put their time and heart and love behind your product like you do? Is it just a check? Is yeah. it just a And if it's just yeah. a check, it's dangerous, because yeah. it's a, it's a one-day thing. Yeah. yeah. And you know, in marketing and promoting, you need consistency. It has to be over and over and over. Yeah. So it's a little bit dangerous, unless you have a great relationship with somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I would love to be of service <laughs> that uh, needs that kind of strategic marketing. That wraps up this episode of Good Looking Out with Karen Civil. Be sure to tune in next week to see if our next entrepreneur has what it takes to impress our panelists. This is Good Looking Out.